Okay, so I am going to be um, refuting Mother's claim that we should keep the electoral college. And I am going for the proposition that we should get rid of it. Okay, so one of the things that Mohit brings up is that um, the electoral college, um, getting rid of it would be based on popular vote, and so um, we might as well get rid of the Senate if we got rid of the Electoral College because the Electoral College protects the state rights. But um, the Constitution emphasizes checks and balances, and um, there's a balance of power, and that's why we have the Senate, so we should be able to um, base the electing of our president on popular vote because we have a balance of power with the Senate and the House. Um, James Madison said that it is not necessary um, to and shift the balance of power to states because we elect our Congress by state and district. By removing the Electoral College, the president will be elected by popular vote by state and they will still retain their consideration in government by Congress. Um, also, when my partner Zach brought up um, that Wyoming is um, less intelligent, Mohit said that, um, oh, less educated, <laughs> sorry. Um, Mohit said that, <laughs> Mohit said that um, these are averages, but they're actually percentages, and um, lower percentages are, are comparable. <laughs> Um, well, averages may not be. And um, he also said that different states have different interests and that um, just because one state has more people doesn't mean that they should have more weight. But um, removing the Electoral College would um, use popular vote and make every vote equal. So it wouldn't give um, another state more weight. And also, um, he said that, Mohit said that um, the states have different geographical interests and removing the Electoral College would um, take the power away from the state, but that's what the Senate is for and that's why we have two representatives per, per state in the Senate. And also, um, he said that um, <coughs> oh, you said that um, the, what did you say? <laughs> oh, just because one state has more people in it doesn't mean that they should have more weight, but why does that mean that um, the big states' rights should, the big states' needs are better than the needs of the small states? And um, when Zach talked about how the Electoral College has failed four times, and you said that it isn't a big deal. Well, should we wait for it to fail five times before we fix it? <laughs> so, um, we still have a significant need to remove the Electoral College because um, the it gives uneven weight to less populated states. Um, the 10 smallest states in America by population control 32 electoral votes, um, and that's 6% of the votes in the Electoral College, but the 10 smallest states only have 2% of the nation's total population. So that means that 2% of the population controls 6% of the votes for the presidency, which is really uneven. And also the Electoral College still contradicts the idea of democracy. Um, because in the Electoral College, it's like a small elite who can pick the president, but the modern definition of democracy says that a form, it's a form of government where um, the Constitution guarantees basic personal and political rights, fair and free election. Um, you also said that third parties should be eliminated but the framers of the Constitution were counting on um, the country having multiple parties to balance the power. Um, James Madison um, said that because getting rid of all of the parties is, um, would lead to 
undesirable side effects and that we should ensure that all the parties are represented because it reduces the likelihood that any one party would control all the seats and um, it would lead to tyranny basically. So a two party system often leads to one party winning a majority and that's what democracy is all about, the fact that we have multiple parties. Also, third parties are important um, because they have a spectrum of, they provide a spectrum of beliefs. Um, third parties have come up with ideas like women's voting rights, child labor laws, immigration restrictions, income tax, social security, and they came up with all of that stuff before um, Republicans and Democrats did. So, um, also, I'd like to bring up the fact that um, the Electoral College causes an unbalance in campaigning because of the swing states. Um, the presidential candidates send, er, spend a lot more money in um, swing states. Um, overall, it's 72.1% more money spent in the swing states, which kind of distorts the election, and if it were based on popular vote, they would reach more people by going to where more people are instead of just where the swing states are, and that's why we should still get rid of the election. <laughs>